All right, hello everybody. Uh, Jeff Gibby here at Meta. Oh, hello everybody. Uh, Jeff Gibby here at MetaStock. Welcome to today's uh, class. We've got a special guest. I enjoy this class quite a bit. I hope you have, uh, uh, I hope you're excited. In any case, we'll get to the uh, uh, one of your favorite parts, the legal disclaimer. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using MetaStock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. And MetaStock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the strat software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So we got that out of the way. Uh, we do have with us today a very special in-office guest uh, by the name of Robert Dedman. Say hi to everybody, Robert. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Robert and kind of his history. Um, the uh, One of the things that... Oh, Scott is excited. Good to see you, Scott. One of the things that um, um, uh, I like to tell when I'm talking to people about Robert is Robert actually started in our support team. How long ago was that? 25 years. And uh, <laughs> is that 25 years ago? 25 years ago. No, no, no. Yes, it was. Tw well, um, it, when actually, you started, no, maybe. No, no, no. 23 years ago. It was, tw it was uh, 96. Is when you left. No, it was when I came. Oh, okay. Uh, when did you leave? I started. I left in two thousand one. Okay. Well, um, well, actually, left in ninety nine, came back, uh, and then left finally in two thousand one when we created the TSA group for okay. for right. large scale stuff. So anyway, I have a lot of dirt we could kind of discuss later about Robert. If Go we want for to. it. Um, uh, I do remember Robert. Uh, uh, he was a great support guy. Uh, uh, I remember we would get in debates in the parking lot quite a bit about like the hazards of system testing and just really geeky stuff like that. Um, Scott went along. Thank you for letting me know, Jay, that you're not seeing a screen in the GoToShare. Um, let me make sure that that is shared properly, okay? Um, okay. And you didn't miss much. Um, just a legal disclaimer. So we'll go ahead and get that shared for you on the GoTo side. You should be able to see that. So. Uh, Robert uh, then went on to develop and become actually a fairly prolific MetaStock add-on developer. Uh, he we we looked at the numbers. He's de he developed the most popular MetaStock add-on of all time that was Performance Systems Plus. Mm -hmm. He did a sequel to that called Trade Oracle. Um, he did uh, Triangles Two, and uh, it was out of pure coincidence. I ran into you a f two three years ago. Maybe yeah, three, it was four about, years it was, ago. Yeah, three, yeah, three years ago down at the Traders Expo. And he's like, I'd like to do another MetaStock add-on. And I, I knew Robert had a great pedigree for developing add-ons that people really liked, that were solid. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. What did you have in mind? And that was where um, the TSA, uh, the, the uh, uh, Ichimoku, Master. Ichimoku Master was Came born. Along. Thanks for the help. It's Not been a, a long day. I'm working <laughs> on 12 hours today, guys. So. Need more caffeine. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay. We're good. So I, I, I promised to also give a little bit of a, I actually, was, I could have just advanced the screen too. There it's you go. right here. <laughs> so the Ichimoku Muster was born there. And it's uh, a, a very, very interesting add-on. Um, it's been actually pretty exciting to bring it on. When we brought it on, I knew very, very little about the Ichimoku Master. And one of the things that I found a little bit about it, uh, just to kind of talk off the cuff a bit, is... It's a, it's a method that looks very, very complex when you kind of look at it and you know, all the lines on the screen and stuff like that. Once you kind of understand what they're doing, it's actually a pretty straightforward and pretty powerful methodology. There's, uh, there's people uh, in the industry that sell coaching packages on how to trade Ichimoku Master that cost like $6,000. And really a lot of times what they're looking for is just like a TK cross and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, I also promised to talk a little bit about Goicha Hasada, which is this guy here. This is the only picture I could find on Google for him. Um, Goicha Hasada basically also went by Ichimoku Sanjin and translated uh, according to Google, again, uh, which I trust, uh, it, uh, over Apple at least for maps, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, means what a man from the mountain sees. So. Sorry. Well, there's variations. There's also like, um, you know, a view from above, view from a distance. Um, basically, the idea, or, or even equilibrium at a distance. The idea is you're you're taking a 
larger perspective, it's the general philosophy of looking at the forest rather than looking at the trees. So uh, Anyway, to kind of give some in information on the system, and, and correct me on the dates, I don't have my speaker notes, which is uh, mm. because of the, the way the display is, but he developed it in, was it, uh, how, he developed it? Well, he started developing it back in the 30s. Um, and so he had gotten a bunch of people together, uh, basically interns, to try and figure out a mechanism that would work well in the markets. And um, they spent, like I said, many years working on this over and over again. And finally, he ended up releasing it to the public about 1968. And so that means that at this point, we're, it's basically been uh, out in the public for about 51 years. But it didn't actually make it to the Western area uh, of traders until actually fairly recently. It was something that had stayed pretty much um, over in the Orient. And um, like I said, it came around here around the 90s, but even then didn't really pick up any steam. It didn't start really picking up steam until uh, the 2000s and more predominantly here in the 2010s. So, uh, but yeah, that's basically the the history of, of what it came through. The nice thing about it is even after 50 years, it still held up. Um, it's still very heavily used uh, because it's so consistent in the way it works. And even though it was designed around a Japanese trading, uh, trading market, it translates over to a U.S. market just fine. And it seems to translate into all the other markets um, and, and work very well with all of them. So... Yeah, that's basically the uh, the history is as going forward. Uh, uh, in other words, a very popular model. Mm -hmm. It's been proven over time. People really, really like it. And um, we're going to start. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have Robert. We're going to look at an icon chart, and he's going to kind of talk a little bit about um, the the way that the method works, the way the indicators work, and then we're going to kind of migrate more into MetaStock and just show you kind of how the add-on pulls that all together. So. Um, in any case, um, let's go ahead and just do that. Okay. And uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so this right here is an example of a of an Ichimoku chart. Um, more specifically, the indicators for the Ichimoku uh, method, which has been plotted upon a price chart. In this case, it looks like it's Apple. Um, what we have is we obviously have this right here is our standard okay we have our standardized stock prices um, going up and down and that right there is what you would see in any type of regular charting software uh, basically just showing you what's going on in in price action um, looks like we are not scanned out to the end uh, get here, here. Yeah. let me help oh, there we go. In the head. yeah Jeff, are you watching the YouTube chat? I am. Okay. So, uh, apologize for the technical difficulties here, folks. What is? I wonder if it's because of the YouTube screen. It's just not scan. Oh, oh, oh! Here we can. Comment. There we go. Okay. We can fake it a little bit. No, but bit. that works use great. Wheel mouse. Yeah, let's just use that right there. So time. we're good to go. Uh, Fabio, welcome. Um, Michael. Welcome, welcome uh, to the YouTube channel. Okay. Go ahead. All right, so um, these right here, like I said, we're looking at that basic price chart but with um, obviously some other things put on top of it. We have this big wide pink and green, um, big massive cloud looking thing here. We've got a couple of small indicators on top. And so that, we're gonna go ahead and start with that right now and just get an idea of what's going on with it. So uh, to begin with, we're going to take a look at this first indicator right here. This is called the Tenkan Sen indicator. Now, what it is, it's basically the midpoint of the last nine periods of, of bars on the chart. So if we take from this high point to the low point of the last nine bars and take the midpoint, then, then we would get this point here. Now, as a midpoint, that means that it's going to be going up and down, much like a moving average would. And that's an important distinction to make here is because it is a trend-following system the same way that moving average systems are trend-following systems. Um, but by working with midpoints, um, it allows it to have certain um, shelves that it stops at for creating support and resistance positions. 
Now, we are usually not seeing those shelves too much here when we're dealing with this fast indicator, this Tenkinsen. Where it does come into place is where we're dealing with this indicator right here, the one right below it. This is known as the Kaijinsen. Now, this is the same as the Tenkinsen, how the Tenkinsen is the midpoint of the nine periods. The Kaijinsen is the midpoint of the last 26 periods. And because of that, you will see that it does get these little flat shelves, which you can see right here become really nice support and resistance points. Um, they're actually surprisingly really good at that. But you can see how they generate these flat positions here. And that's something you don't get when you're dealing with moving averages. Moving averages like to hug, to a certain extent, the price, where this is more trying to figure out where that equilibrium of price is going to be which is one of the, the larger distinctions between that and other trend-following systems. Along with that information, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the other pieces here. We're, we're not going to explain the trading yet, we're just trying to explain what the indicators are. We see this part right down here. This is known as the Kumo. Um, another way to think about it is called the Cloud. Now, a lot of people will call it the Kumo Cloud, but the problem is that's kind of redundant. Um, since Kumo is actually means cloud, it's like saying cloud cloud. But if that's what works for you, so be it. But anyways, when we're looking at this, the Kumo is, dev is developed by an indicator on the top and then an indicator on the bottom. In this case, that indicator would be reversed. This part right here would be the slow part, and this part right here would be the slow part as well. With the fast moving part, in this case on the downward move, coming up and being the fast moving part on the upward move. Now, this indicator right here, the top one, is called the Senku Span A. So basically think of it as the Senku Span Fast. And then the slower one would be Senku Span B, and this would be the Senku Span Slow. Um, how these are calculated are a little bit different. What you have here for the uh, Senku Span A is the midpoint of the Tenkan Sen and the Kaijin Sen. So that'd be about right here, shifted forward 26 periods, hence moving forward to right about there, which is exactly where it should be. And so at each point that you see here, this is that midpoint of these two indicators back here shifted forward 26 periods. This is part of the forward looking effect. The slower one here, this Senku Span B, is the midpoint of the last 52 periods on the chart, also shifted forward 26 periods. So because of that, we see this right here down here is, if we come back to 26 periods, the midpoint between there and some low point, prop most likely this one. Um, Actually, probably not, probably more like this, because it looks like this one is lower, so probably it becomes the midpoint over here. Actually, sorry, wrong indicator. That's the A. So yes, for, for the B, that would be the low point, probably the midpoint of there and whatever is coming up uh, for the 26 periods shifted forward. Okay, the difference between these two is what creates the cloud, and this is a really important part of the Ichimoku trading mechanism because it's what's defined as that equilibrium point that we were talking about where we're looking at, at equilibrium at a distance. Um, this is the point where it's considered that it would be unsafe to be trading, but we'll get into that part in a minute because we want to show the last of these indicators, which is the Chiku span back here. Now the Chiku span is the closing price shifted 26 periods back. Now, because of that, we have something that's immediately on the current price data, we have something that's forward-looking, and something that's past-looking. Um, you could kind of consider it to be a leading and a lagging indicator uh, put on at the same time. And so these are the five components that make up the basic Ichimoku methodology that he, uh, he came up with. And from that, we like so we will look at, at how these signals are traded. So what we see here on this is we see that this yellow line here, which is that Tenkan span, will have points where it crosses above and below the Kaijin Sen. I'm sorry, did I say Tenkan span? I meant uh, Tenkan, yeah, Tenkan Sen. Uh, crosses above and below the, the Kaijin Sen. 
So for example, here it crosses above. Now in this case, that is not actually the buy signal like most people would think because it's only one of the two real components necessary or that you really want to have to be part of the trade. Since this is a trend following system, that's not enough information. The reason it's not enough information is this crossover to go up is occurring below this cloud where this cloud is occurring. What we want to have happen for any signal is we want there to have been a cross, let's say we're going for a long trade, um, a bullish trade, we want there to be a Tenkan Sen to cross above the Kaijin Sen and for the closing price to be above or outside of this Kumo cloud above it. Okay, so in this case here we have the first part of the signal which we're not taking yet. And then suddenly here we get a piece of information that says, oh, it's now closed outside of that Kumo. Now we can take the trade and follow that up. And it also works the same in reverse. We'd be looking for something on the opposite. Now this cross can actually occur below, at which point it's known basically as a weak crossover. This crossover could occur in the middle, which would make it a neutral, and the crossover could occur above, which makes it a strong crossover. In this case, you would have it where the price had come down below, and therefore the indicator coming below, and then crossing back up above. So in a case like that, you basically have that where the prices are and that would be your trading signal. So if it's trading above, you, um, you could have it where the price is down in here even though the indicators are crossing above here, but you wanna make sure that when you take the trade, both of the price is above and that a cross has occurred before that in that direction. It's not necessarily a matter of which one comes first, it's a matter of that both of them have occurred. So that's the real entry mechanism um, in this Ichimoku uh, methodology. The converse, of course, would be for taking short positions. You'd be looking for a crossover from of the Tenkan Sen, I'm sorry, of the yeah, Tenkan Sen from above to below, and then for the price to be below the cloud and to get in. So if it's really just those two indicators, you know, and whether it's in a uh, inside the cloud, what's the point of any other part of it? Well, they actually have a lot of value too. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you for a second. Not a problem. Okay. Uh huh. So so to be clear, uh, one of the main entry signals um, is what what they call a TK cross. Correct. Okay? That's when the Tekken Sen, when, or which is the yellow line on this chart. Correct. Crosses up above the Kijin Sen. The guy, yeah. And I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm just gonna call it the TK cross. That's and fine. And we have uh, a guy that speaks the Japanese language. I'm not gonna offend his ears by trying pronouncing these things. And I'm sure room. I'm getting it wrong too. So that's fine. <laughs> so, but this is kind of one of the main entry signals. The problem with that is as long as we're down below the cloud or below the Kumo we're bearish. It's in a bearish phase. We want it to wait till it comes up above the cloud. And mainly it's because that cloud is the equilibrium point. So we're waiting for it that if it crosses above to go into the cloud and hover, not necessarily go above or below the cloud at that point. We're not sure where it's going to happen at that point unless we have some projection information telling us where it should be going in the future, okay. which is why the cloud is projected into the future. Right. Mm -hmm. So to give us an idea of where trends should be going, but we don't always have that information at the time when that cross occurs. Now, the, the, I don't know if I want to get off topic here, but with the cloud, mm -hmm. you can use that as kind of the, the direction you can anticipate the future price to go. <laughs> it, it's the way where there's going to be an equilibrium point. So what it actually means is not necessarily where the price is going to go in the future, but where the price is going to revert to. Right. when when okay. it runs out of steam it's it's going to be where it says that it wants to hover around so um, in this case like I said it will start going up um, in this case before or probably before it gets out of here um, but and when it does you know it gives you an idea that it probably is going to break out that way it's not a guarantee of it but it lets you see where it's going to go. And then that way, when this runs out of steam, you can see where it's going to try and revert back to okay. uh, for its equilibrium. So that's really the main point of that as an equilibrium point. But yes, it is forward looking in the sense that if you see that crossover um, here, which is actually this part right here, which is known as a Kumo cross, um, how we had the TK cross, this is actually a Kumo cross, uh, where it crosses from the Sinkuspan A now crosses above the Sinkuspan B. 
um, to give you that projection going forward of where the prices are expected to go trending at, at that point. It likes it. It's not a guarantee it will, but it shows where it has a likely effect to occur. Okay. Continue. All right. Okay. Yeah. So along with that, we have this fifth indicator back here, which is the Chiku span. Now, this Chiku span here likes it as the closing price shifted 26 periods back. And the reason for this is the philosophy is that if for some reason the price now, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the price now is um, above or below where it was 26 periods ago helps to determine whether it's a trend. So in this case here, we can see this price here, which is our current close, is in fact above, way above, where it was 26 periods ago. It's at the same or it's considered being a trend. Um, the same way that if this were below the price 26 periods ago, that would be a bearish trend. But what you'll often find is in cases where this ends up being, if we look at it right here, where it ends up being right around the same prices as, or the same as the prices here. Because of that, since we know that this is 26 periods in the past, the real price action is occurring here. What it's letting us know is that there's actually no trend occurring right there, that it hasn't been able to really change out of its price range in the last 26 periods. So it's kind of basically de defining what could be seen as a sideways market, even though it's not a sideways market occurring in the cloud. So that's where that comes in really handy is to kind of let you see what whether you should actually be trading or not and what way what direction you should be looking at for it to be occurring in so for example if you see that this right here is going down but this right here is coming up and above that's a good time to be saying you know I'm not sure that we want to be staying here we're not necessarily wanting to be staying long or I'm sorry we don't necessarily want to be staying short but we certainly don't have enough information yet to say we want to go long either so it's keeping us out of potentially bad trades by making sure that here we wouldn't have gotten into um, another short position. So had this crossed above, you know, across this way, and we see that the prices are still above, or uh, that the uh, Chiku span is above the prices, we don't want to make the accident by trying to get in when we shouldn't. So it's a protective me uh, mechanism. So that's the basic concept behind the Ichimoku uh, method, and. You know, really is simple. Um, it, when you put all the pieces together, it really fits well. What isn't simple is when you start looking at the past, when you're trying to learn the system and figure out how do these signals actually work together. It's always great when you're looking at it at the most recent bar because you can see that here's the close, here's these indicators, we see where the uh, Senku span is, and we see where the Chuku span is, and it all makes sense. The problem is when we start trying to f get confidence in it by working with it in the past and we start looking at them, they just become a jumbled mess. What people end up doing is they start looking at prices here and looking where the Chiku span is in relationship to the price that they're looking at, at the entry on. Or for example, if they're looking at this signal here, they're looking at where the Chiku span is now and saying, well, wait, that doesn't work. Or they're not realizing that this forward looking indicator here is, is Based on, or like I said, that they're looking forward through it. So they're looking everything at what's occurring in this window. That becomes really difficult for doing back testing and for getting confirmation about what you're doing um, because you're often having to count the bars back to see where everything is on a chart. So while it likes it, it's great for them for the current bar. It's really difficult to look for anything historically. It's and also, it's also, and I, I and I think it's also a little bit difficult because not only do you have like five or six indicators that mm -hmm. are on a chart, for somebody that's brand new to this, they're all Japanese named indicators as True. well, right? It'd be nice if there was something that kind of helped kind of keep track of everything and explain. It would really people. be nice if something like that were around, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know? But um, I think it might be a good time to kind of go to the, the slides and just summarize the main by conditions, and uh, and then we can kind let's of go ahead and do that. Go into the Metastock program. Sure Absolutely, how the expert works. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's go back right here to the picture of Goicha Hasada. Okay, 
And these are basically the main buy conditions. Or yeah. What, and you can you can make these. These are the things that would factor into a buy or a short. Well, right, right, right. Either for for yeah, buy or sell. Um, you know, just the inverse for the sell. But one of the things to remember is on this, we've got two. Uh, the the top two, or actually more specifically, the Tenkinsen, Kaijinsen cross, um, is the first real indicator that you're looking looking at. And then um, the next one is going to be down here, which is the relationship between the price and the Kumo. Those are the two main signals, and everything else becomes a supporting signal. So even if these two are, are right, you, you, know, you can take trades on that, but you're really going to want to look at other aspects. And these other aspects are what's the current direction of the Kumo, what the future uh, direction of the Kumo is, the one that's being projected forward. That relationship between the Chiku span and the Kumo, as well as the re relationship between Chiku span and price, and those things provide six different uh, indicator pieces together to let you know how strong these signals are getting. And you know, when you see all six of them in the same direction, you're in a trend. Um, you're you're already in a trend at that point. So. You know, a lot of people will wait till they see all six of them in the same order before they get in. And I personally um, am looking more for like four of them to be in alignment. I, I require the first two. And then I'm looking for two of the others to give me support to say, yeah, I really am in, in alignment and I want to get in on the trend, um, you know, while it's, while it's coming together. And that does put me a little bit more at risk by the potential, uh, potential of a whipsaw kicking me out. Um, but the other thing is, is, is it helps to make sure that I get in that trend when it does occur. Um, so like I said, I prefer four of them to be in alignment. A lot of people like to go for five or six, and it's really more of a personal choice. But we are going to show you how we can make that really easy to help make that choice. We're going to uh, answer a couple of questions, too, while, we, while we're jumping over to Metastock. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Suriz says, is this good for binary options more than Forex? Um, as far as for options, uh, for the binary options, I've done a lot of options, but I will be honest, my experience with binary options is very, very small. So um, as far as for analyzing charts, sure, you could use it for that, which is what binary um, options are doing. But as far as the real mechanics working with it, I'm, I'm going to have to say I'm probably not the person to ask because I haven't ever done that before. Uh, just trying to be honest with you, I just don't have that experience. Uh, it works great with stocks, with foreign exchange, um, with uh, commodities. It the biggest could thing work. about options, though, um, uh, being somebody that's played options, not binary options. I'll be really specific. Yeah. About oh well, that. with regular options, this works great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with regular options, this is awesome. Like I said, I, I've used this. It with helps with the direction. Right. It's really what it ha comes down to. Yeah, which is good for binary options. But again, like I said, I've, I've just not traded yeah. them enough to Neither have the experience to, to, <laughs> to tell you. JT O'Rourke says, can this be used on lower time frames for day trading? Um, it can, but uh, like most systems, especially for, for systems that work on really t uh, tight time frames when you're uh, dealing with spreads and things like that and prices, the mechanisms do work. I, I have not seen it be really effective um, in its entirety when you're working on, say, like a one minute or a five minute chart. In that case, I may ignore the other signals and just go to the, to the cross and to the price Kumo relationship. Um, and I think that's what most people do is you get into those really smaller time frames. Um, I personally work in the one hour time frame if I'm working with foreign exchange. And, and in that case, it works very nice. Um, so, so you can use it for, for lower than day, but um, and you know how you use it is up to you. You do have options on, on what you're working with, but but I enjoy it on smaller time frames. Uh, Joe asks, can you scan when the stock crosses above the cloud? I'm actually going to be showing how to do that in yeah, a little bit. Exactly. So, so yes. Uh, Michael says, and this is a great segue. Appreciate the segue, Michael. How do we learn about the si rules of the system? We're actually going to get into that, <laughs> so right. it's really great. Um, yeah, it's like I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Um, what we have, what we, before we show the actual uh, product itself, uh, as far as the expert advisor aspect, we're going to show the product on a Metastock chart. Um, what we have here is this is the Metastock uh, representation of, of the Ichimoku system. Now, as you can see, we have a cloud here that's kind of shaded in, and we have a Tenkan Sen and a Kaijin Sen, and then here we also have the Chiku span. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that the uh, Senku span does not 
uh, go into the, the future. And that is something, you know, unfortunately that is one of the limitations of Metastock at this moment. However, what we've done is we've created this indicator up here to give you that projection as to what's going on. This right here, which remember how we said that the uh, Chiku span was the current close shifted 26 periods back. Well, what we have is we have the Chiku span up here, and then we have an unshifted version of the cloud. And that allows us to see where the closing plot price is in relationship to that projection of the cloud. And so we're able to actually do full analysis of, of the entire range of the Ichimoku mechanism um, on Metastock, even though it not, can't necessarily plot into the future. We're creating a system where we can see that future projection anyway. And so because of that, here we see where those projections are occurring, and we have um, the price and the relationships and everything together. But just seeing those prices and stuff still doesn't make it necessarily an easy thing to look at when you're looking at all this past data. And, and when you start especially trying to figure out which indicators are playing together in these tight little spots, that's the whole thing that makes Ichimoku really difficult for working and trying to, to figure out past trades. And so that happens to be where Ichimoku Master comes in. Now, um, one of the things that Ichimoku Master does is it puts arrows on the chart showing you aspects of where things are occurring. Um, so we can see like so where crosses occur and where price, prices occur in and outside of the Kumo and also see here we can see for example that the price is occurring above or below Kumo. Um, with that we are able to uh, take a look very quickly as far as some basic signals but that's really not what you want to see. So we're going to show you some another piece that's part of this that answers a lot of this question, these questions here. Here we see we actually have an expert advisor that's going to go ahead and give us information as to what's going on on this chart at any time. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring this to the current day. And so what we can see is here it's going to tell us what are the conditions of the entire Ichimoku mechanism um, all in one shot. So it's going to, you know, you apply this to a chart, this uh, expert to a chart, and look at this commentary, and you will see that it is going to show you what the individual values of any indicator are in case you want to know specific numbers. But here's the great part is immediately tells you what's going on with any of the signals. So the first two signals that we see, the ones that are the most important, are going to be the TK cross occurrence and the price to Kumo relationship. And it's going to let you know whether they're bullish, neutral, or bearish. And so we can see here that it's letting us know a strong TK cross signal occurred seven periods ago. And it's going to let us know when and where things are occurring so that it keeps us up to date so we can check on, on where things are happening. But here's the nice thing. Remember how we're talking about things like the current and future Kumo direction? It's already figuring it out to figure out what's going on. Um, the nice thing, like I said, about the future Kumo direction is it's reading forward in that data for us like it would be up here so that we don't necessarily have to try and count forward from those positions. We see the Chuku span relationship to the Kumo. We actually know that it's, look, it's going to be looking back to where this is to find that relationship to here. So we don't have to do the looking to go back and find it. It's doing it for us and it knows that this analysis here actually applies on this bar up here, which is the correct way to handle it and we don't have to worry about it here. And it's keeping that same aspect here, the relationship to price, where if we're looking at this 26 periods ago, it is above the price on this bar. Um, and then it also lets us know how many periods until or since Akumo twist, remember we talked about the twist, this part right here, and lets us know um, not only is it bullish, but how long ago it occurred, or if it's in the future, when it will occur, how many bars in the future it's occurring, and that will be counting down. So this is that very fast way to get a very quick answer as to what's going on. Now, because of that, we can actually take this and click to any bar, and it will recalculate that, all that, at that same time and let you know what's going on. So here, for example, we have the current Kumo direction, which here is, is bearish, which is not like I said, that's nothing that would keep me out of a trade just by that one being bearish. I just want to know about it because I know that at this point, even though this is bearish, 
the twist coming up is a bullish twist. So it's let me know that that's going to occur in 12 periods. And as we can see where that occurs here, if we can't 12 periods forward, it turns into a bullish twist. So it lets you know that that's going to happen. Okay, that's the great part about this is now we can go to any one of these bars and we can quickly see what the status is of any of these indicators or actually all of them together. And so, you know, it's a very fast way to quickly see what the status is. So, for example, here we have stuff that basically saying we've got a, you know, a couple of bullish, a neutral and some bearish. This is probably not anything I'd be looking at. And as you look at it, the way it goes is not anything we really want to be dealing with. So, um, you know, it's really helpful for that. Now, it also shows where your support and resistance lines are, which is basically you have your Kaijusen is a support um, or it can be a support of resistance as well as the Senku Span A and the Senku Span B on the bottom. And this lets you know about that. However, you're asking about learning about this and you know where do you get the education from that? Well, that's what we're actually going to go ahead and do right here is we're going to let you see how this is actually affecting it here by giving it some width. And then there's three different modes that we have available in this. And we're going to show you this primary mode right now, which is the complete. So along with having this part right here, um, what we have is the information about each of the signals. So it actually gives you a description of what everything is and what's going on right now. So that you can actually see all the details of everything that's happening. So let's say you're wanting to learn about the TK cross. Well, here you're going to learn about what the TK cross is, and you're going to learn, uh, or like I said, the black is going to tell you what it is and what it basically means, and then the blue will tell you what it means for this particular bar that it's analyzing. So it'll actually give you a description of what's happening, when it's happening, and what you should be looking at, and, and what the signal actually means. And it gives you that for each of the pieces in the whole mix. Now, because of that, you can learn bar by bar just by going forward and backwards to the bars, and it will give you that custom presentation for every bar that you put it on so that you can actually learn the Ichimoku me mechanism by comparing what it's saying down there with the relationships that you're, you're seeing up here at the top. Now, let's say for a second you get used to it. You notice you know, like we said, this information, the black is going to be the same information every time that teaches you stuff. The blue will change on each bar. But let's say you get really used to that. You just want to see, you know, I don't necessarily need the, the description anymore. I get that now. Not a problem. You can then sit here and say, I'm not going to use the, the complete anymore. I'm just going to go to the description one. And by switching the description one, you can say, you know what, I don't need that black part anymore. I just need to know what do the bars mean this time. So now it's gone ahead and cleaned it up for you. So all that you really care about is what's going on on that bar at that moment. So you can go through those descriptions once you're really familiar with what the signals actually do and go through and move. Now, let's say that you've got a really good idea about what they all mean. You just need to look at them in an instant. You just got to get that idea of what's happening because you don't really care about anything else. So instead, you can finally go to the minimal. So after you've gotten good and really you've got a, a, a good you know, methodology down, you really just care what are the signals. You know, I have faith in it. I have trust in it. What are the signals? What are, you know, that's all I really need to know because I get everything else. And so this helps you with that to say we're going to cut that out and just give you this minimal thing, which is most likely what you'll end up using in the long run is just, just the minimal version. And as you can see, it lets you know that. Not me. Not you. I still use complete. Really? I want the uh, descriptions. Yeah, it's That's a good awesome. reminder. That is. Um, like I said, for me, I'm looking at so many charts so fast that I just need to get the idea, do I care about this or not, yes or no. And, and so I'm just used to it. But like I said, I look at them constantly, so so they're really use, or fast for me. Um, and, you know, we can see right here it even lets you know trade entry is not recommended because your price in, in Kumo is neutral. Here, this occurred two days ago. This is going to occur in 24. And again, the nice thing is, for every one of those descriptions that we see, I know, let's say we're going back to that complete. Um, uh, I pushed that all around, didn't I? Uh, probably is above there. There we go. Um, OK, 
coming back to the complete, again, it gives you all of these things on every bar that you click on. It gives you a different um, piece of information so you can describe it and go it the whole way forward. But the best part, like I said, is, is it's going forward and backwards for you so that you don't have to worry about the confusion when you start seeing all these indicators massed together, not knowing which one you're supposed to be looking forward, and often forgetting that you're supposed to be looking forward and forgetting that you're supposed to be looking back. And that's the biggest thing whenever I've taught people about trading Ichimoku that they have is they keep saying, well, I'm looking at this bar here, but if you look, the Chico span's in this position here. It's like, well, you're not supposed to be looking at Chico span here. You're supposed to be looking at Chico span back here. Um, you know, it's like, or there's not a cross here. You know, there's not a, a, you know, a Kumo cross. It's like, no, but the Kumo cross is in the future. You have to remember to be looking in the future, not where your bars are. And so that's where, where um, the Ichimoku Master comes in to help, is it takes care of all of that work for you, is, which is so important when you're trying to learn. I mean, granted, it's in the past, so you're not going to be taking the trades, but when you're trying to learn and understand a system, you want to make sure that you're getting it right. And that's where Ichimoku Master comes in, as it gets the signals right for you to help you from making the mistakes that you might make when you're trying to learn it. So that's really this this valuable point of this whole of this whole uh, you know product here is it lets you see all of that and gets you involved into a system that's trend following but has a great history in trend following and it's really got a, a, a long standing success rate with it and like I said keeps you in that. I, uh, personally, I love the fact that there's a bit of a scoreboard right here. It tells you, okay, everything that's bullish. Um, I still, and and it might be the fact that I'm not a master yet, an mm. Ichimoku master, if you would. <laughs> but um, I still like to be reminded sometimes what exactly I'm looking for. And that black text does such a great job of, I mean, just, just to kind of uh, zoom it in a bit so you can see it. But the Tenkan Kijun cross is the predominant signal. So it's telling you exact, that this is the major signal or the predominant mm -hmm. signal. It's telling you how it's using what those are indicate what you can do with it and i i know what the tk signal is at this point but having this there to kind of, as a reference in case i i'm forgetting is very very helpful and every single one of those uh bullish bearish patterns that he's got up here are fleshed out uh and as he was saying the blue part just tells you exactly kind of how it relates to the current chart yeah. so it tells you kind of a textbook definition in black and then it relates it to the exact price bar. To how that signal is, is actually affecting or, or represented on that chart at that time or where you're having it analyzed. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question about how do we learn this system and how do we, you know, uh, do all this kind of stuff. Now, I guess probably the next thing is uh, they were asking about looking Should for signals. Should we do a scan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do a scan. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Metastock, Metastock uh, is a product that does do scanning. Uh, we call it exp the, the Explorer in Metastock, and uh, Robert has designed a uh, uh, an Explorer that works. And let's just go ahead and open it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop open the Power Console here. I'm gonna move it onto a screen that you can see. Uh, there we go. And uh, we're just gonna go to the scanner, and we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about how the scan works. So I'm just gonna come down here in the alphabetical list and uh, we'll find the Ichimoku Master. And I've got a lot of scans in here. Um, you know, I've been here for a long time, 23 years. Something like that, yeah. No, no, 23 like years no, as I, of March. Yeah. So um, I've, I've developed a lot of scans. Um, uh, it's a very powerful tool. But we finally got down to Ichimoku, and here's, uh, just before we run the exploration, uh, I'm gonna hover on this tooltip and kind of explain what we're gonna be looking for. So this is going to filter out any stock that doesn't have a long main or a long re-entry signal or a short main or a short re-entry signal. Mm -hmm. Do you want to kind of explain a little bit more about what those are? Well, the long main is the first time you have um, a Krumo cross occur in a direction and the price close outside of it, okay, okay in that direction. So if you're looking for a bearish signal, um, you know, uh, a long main is going to basically be where um, like I said, the Kuma cross has gone bullish and um, the, the price has crossed above the Kumo. Now again, it doesn't necessarily care which one occurs first. It just makes sure that they both happen. They're both in the, the same direction. They're, they're both in the same direction and are the most recent signals. Okay. okay? The re-entry is then when it goes 
when the TK goes uh, above, b comes back below, and then shoots b or goes back above again, even though the price didn't necessarily come into the cloud. Okay. So it lets you know that that's the, the re-entry point if you're going to use it. And the shorts are just opposite. Exactly. And so to answer the question about how we would scan for a stock that crosses above the cloud, we'd be looking for the long main, but it's not going to just tell you, okay, the cloud uh, has the the price of the security crossed above the cloud because that's only looking at half the picture. Right. It's also going to be looking for the TK cross to have also occurred. Uh, yeah, at some point. And, and like I said, it could be that the, the TK cross occurs first and then the price cro crosses out of the, the Kumo or the Kumo crossed out but it still was waiting for a TK cross. Those are usually the ones though that will turn into um, a re-entry at that point. Um, so that's what we're looking for, like I said, which one is occurring first. So uh, while I was explaining that, I just I loaded in the S&P 500. This is off of local data. So our data I've got, basically that just means downloaded data. It's going to chunk through all 500 stocks. So right now we're not looking at 500 stocks. In fact, we're going to look at 97% of 500 stocks. We're going to ignore all the ones that don't have a entry opportunity mm -hmm. or a re-entry opportunity, whether that's long or short. So we'll go ahead and let it, maybe I should have done the S&P, or the, the Dow 30, <laughs> but it's going through there. We'll just let it continue to kind of chunk through it. Um, you'll notice, I'm going to kind of pop open this tooltips, mostly to stop for time, but you'll notice uh, the different column labels. What we're actually doing here uh, is not only are we figuring out which ones have that long entry and the short entry, we're also figuring out exactly where everything is bullish or bearish when it comes to the categories that you have on that expert advisor. And the nice thing about this is it means that everything you're looking at on that expert advisor when you get really good, um, you can quickly see which charts you want to open, um, not just choose everything that, that's come up. Um, and that'll be really nice to see in just a moment. Okay. So yeah, in fact, here we've got it right here. This is the great thing. So so we're not we're not going to look at four hundred and ninety. No, no, stocks. no, we're not. <laughs> that, that that would be that's just a nightmare <laughs> nightmare to do. Um, I will often look at all the ones when I'm looking at four at forex, just because there aren't that many forex symbols. Um, plus, I'm one, usually looking at them in real time. Um, but if you're doing this at the end of day or whatever, then this is exactly how you do it. So for, and here's the nice thing is you can actually sort these by whether you want to do like long positions or short positions, um, how you want to handle it. So in this case, like so if we're looking at long positions, we see, you know, that there was a, what kind of TK cross there was. In this case, there was a, um, there was a, um, what do you call it? Uh, TK cross? There was a TK cross. I'm trying to remember. It's like a weak cross. Oh, okay. So yeah, so there was a weak cross. Um, and so with that, and then we see in this case, uh, the close to the Kumo relationship is bullish. The current Kumo is bullish. The future Kumo, however, is bearish. And that's one of them that I actually pay a lot of attention to is the future Kumo. Um, so with that, we then have also the Chiku span relation to the Kumo is neutral. Chiku span related price is neutral. And then um, we take all those pieces with the cross, the Kumo relationships, tie them together to create this score. And we're, you know, six would be the same as if all six of those signals were in the same direction uh, for, for bullish, and a negative six would be if they're all in the same direction for bearish. So in this case, like I said, how I said, I look for ones like about a four is what I'm generally looking at. And so in this case, this one has a score of two. So basically, it's only got, uh, like I said, two in the direction, a couple neutral, and, and one of them out. So it's not a very strong as far as the alignment of the indicators. So this is not one that I personally would look at. You are free to look at any of them that you want. This is just not one that I would look at. Um, looking at this, you know, since we're only getting two that are coming up on, on a primary signal uh, for long, we take this other one here. This one right here has a... Um, like I said, so, so the cross, it's a new one, but in this case, it was, it was a strong cross. And we can see the, the Kumo. Everything right here is actually going above. So we see with the TK cross being positive, and then these five indicators also being positive, we have a positive six, okay? Along with that, we also quickly get to see, you know, what our, our price and volume are to see if it's even in an area we want to play with. So for example, 
I may not necessarily want to be involved with Boeing right now, though not surprisingly, it's a little bearish at the moment <laughs> um, with problems that are going on. Um, so not necessarily a surprise there. Um, but just due to the price, it may not be something, if, especially if I'm wanting to deal with, you know, 100 shares at a time, I may not necessarily have $36,000 I'm wanting to put on a position. I may only have something like, you know, five or 10000 um, So I could look at likes of different price stocks within that realm. Um, but yeah, the nice thing also about this is you can just grab, you know, grab something like that, double click on it and pull up that chart. Um, now, in this case, it's got a different expert advisor on it. But we can go ahead and change we can that. Fix that. We can <laughs> fix that real easy. Just right click. Just right. And apply the template. Yeah. That's what I would do. Uh, I can't remember where. There we go. Yeah, apply the template. And then we've got the Ichimoku. And. No? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we need that. Um, and then you want to attach the expert to. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to do the minimal one for the moment. Sure. No problem. Yeah. And as we can see, that's this is kind of like what we're looking at. We have bearish cross that had occurred last, which was up here. Um, we had a you know which just says it was a weak cross because it was up there. Uh, price. Uh, Kuma relationship. It looks like it's just barely right here. This is the first time it crossed below, so it just barely crossed below the uh, the Senku span uh, or the cloud in this case, the two Senku span. So it closed right there in that really tiny little bar right there. However, um, these things right here are also showing that the current current Kuma direction is bullish. And remember how I said that's something that I personally take. Uh, very with a lot of validity so I myself would be taking that into consideration looking at that here now looking up at the chart up here we see even though um, or that likes of the future Kumo direction likes it is bearish um, we don't see that actually down here if we were looking only at this part here it would appear that it's bullish and that's why it's important to see where it's, the projection is coming from because it's crossing below up here, uh, or I mean from above to below, and so it's, it's going ahead and going bearish at that point, even though we see the current Kumo direction is bullish right here. So it's really nice for quickly seeing what's going on in there. Um, we do see, like I said, that we're looking at the correct relationship to price, uh, for the Chiku span is bearish and the period since the Kumo twist, it says that it's going to occur in 15 periods. So this is one of the things to look at. Here you wouldn't see it because you don't see that twist occurring, but you do see it up here and that's because it, this is 15 periods forward that's letting you know about when that may occur. And that's why it also lets you know if you don't have the template applied, that that uh, twist that's being viewed may not be visible on the chart. So because if it would be up here. But as long as you have the template applied, then you should be able to see that twist just fine. So again, this is like one of those, those great things to look at. Now, as far as whether I would personally take this trade or not, it's this right, huh? It's a two. You know, <laughs> this, is, this is something that I myself would not be looking at. Actually, I don't remember if this one was actually the two. I, um, I, I don't remember, where's the expert? I think it went or, behind. Or not the expert, the thing. Uh, I, I thought it was a two. I think we can get maybe. Um, we had the. Uh, let's just, oh, that's not what I meant to do. But we can just right click here and go to the report. I just yeah. find it on the list again. I because I was just randomly clicking on one for this. Um, so okay. in there, let's go ahead and pull this back over. We okay. see that uh, Boeing. So Boeing. Oh, Minus you're right. It was, it was a negative two, so you're right on that. So um, with that, because it, uh, let's get my stock back. No problem. Yeah, so even though it was in, like, in the same direction, there's these right here are competing with it. So I wouldn't necessarily be looking at this one myself. And a lot of it is also because I'm also aware of the, aware of the news, and I'm going to want to see it actually taking some direction one way or another at this point. I'm not wanting it to play in this equilibrium mode right now, especially with news of 
Boeing what's going on. You're, so, uh, and I, I'm just going to kind of digress a little bit, but you're more interested in fours and fives than even sixes. I, I really am. Um, like I said, I, I like to get into fours because I want to be able to get in as the trend is coming together, um, but still have some stability there. Like I said, a six, you're definitely in a trend, or, or almost definitely in a trend. Not always, but, but almost definitely. But depending on what's going on, by the time it's a six, you might not be getting in, uh, or you might be getting in too late to really get a lot of the profit because that trend is usually pretty established by the mm -hmm. time it's a six. Sure. And so, like I said, it's usually be before it becomes a six, you it has to go from a five it. to a four. Early enough, but not too early. But not too not, early. Not at two or three when it might right. be just a chop, when it's a four, but not necessarily sometimes and, and trends can yeah. last forever obviously yeah. and i will look at, yeah and i will like. and i will look at sixes don't don't think that i won't look at a six I, I will look at a six but like i said usually by then it's already jumped through some some stuff by that point michael wants to know what personality type the system is for um i'm not even <laughs> sure how to answer that um what a, we but, could use one of those personality codes the yeah. uh, do, uh the a W is for the AWSD personality. Test. Okay. Do you remember I, that? I don't From know. the personality test in the, uh, I, yeah, no, yeah. I'm just making stuff up. That's definitely. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, if, if you're wanting to do like scalping, this certainly isn't the kind of thing for you. This is for the personality of somebody who likes to do trend trading because yeah. it is a trend trading system. Um, you know, you are expected to be in for some time. It's not a, you know, get in, get out. Obviously that's different if you're working at say, a uh, hourly chart, an hourly chart, or, or a half hour, or fifteen minute chart. Right on the hourly chart, um, it's not uncommon for me to be in for days on an hourly chart, um, but I also could be taken out, you know, within a couple of hours. Um, usually, if it's a couple of hours, it's it's, it's going to be a, a loss. But you know, and like every system, losses occur. Um, but like I said, the nice thing is, is it always gets you, you know, when there is a trend, it, it's always getting you in the actual trend. Um, like every system you wonder about, it's, it's uh, you know, how, how well it's going to keep you in, um, you know, whether you're going to take a hit when it gets kicked out. But in general, though, like I said, it's nice to know that, that it will always recognize when, this, when the trend is in play. And so that's what it helps me for. And, uh, and I actually like to, you know, keep that. For me, I actually personally, even though it crosses there, that will get it on my radar. I personally like to wait a little bit before I get in to make sure some of that trend gets into motion. That's a me thing in trading. It's something that I like to do. Um, and it's something we even have as an advanced indicator when you, when you get the product um, that will actually show you how to um, go ahead and take advantage of the movements of the price a little bit above, as well as the uh, the uh, Kaijin Sen a little bit above, to, to figure out which stop loss you might want to be using at that point in time. Um, we're not really talking about that much here, but but it is something that gets included if if you get the product. Yeah. We sat down and did like a, how long was that advanced class? It was about an it was a little over an hour, but yeah, somewhere yeah. between I think an hour to an hour and a half. I had so much fun; it didn't feel like that long at all. Yeah, but yeah, um, uh, Scott says I like the scoring system to help people. So in any case, one of the things that we did uh, when and this was uh, when we uh, uh, not too long ago, but after we had initially launched the program, uh, we sat down and it did an advanced class that we recorded that we made available for uh, for customers. The advanced class basically went through, really, uh, I spent a few minutes uh, going step by step on how to, to scan through Metastock and how to get the charts open and stuff like that. But Robert spent a lot of time actually talking about how he actually utilizes it in the trading that he does and kind of his recommendations and uh, we even yeah. made together it, it, it is my style it, it is more geared towards my style of trading but again because um and, and the tools that i use to make it easier for trading which we've also provided those tools mm -hmm. so. uh, and they're automatically available as soon as you kind of get your order into metastock um, it's right there right under your downloads page you have instant access to that training and um uh, I can't speak for myself, but Robert did a really good job that day. Oh, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, uh, okay. 
So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, again, uh, the thing I like about this is, you know, if you've been in the industry long, Ichimoku is such a well-established method. He used it, uh, he's been using it since the 30s, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, no, no, he started research on it in the 30s. So it took it took about 25 so years for him, for him to, to develop, it. Yeah, to, well, to develop yeah. the system. Because uh, they didn't actually know what they were looking for at the time. And so the, uh, like I said, his, his is people came in and spent time looking at chart over and over and over again. Um, all of these interns that he had working for him that just had plowing over it and trying to figure out, you know, how can you look at this as some kind of concept that can be established and is consistent. And it so was released to the public in 68. 68. That was okay. when it was released. Exactly. I was looking for my speaker notes. That's why the screen kept flashing. My apologies. Yeah. But 1968 is one of the most uh, prolific uh, and popular methodologies. I mean, there's people that have built it's professions. Be, yeah, it's because it's the most consistent. Yeah. It's the one that is most consistently uh, workable. What I like is it, it. it's great for teaching you, mm -hmm. number one. So as you're learning about, you know, all the different Kumo, and you should be looking at the current Kumo direction and the future Kumo direction and the relationship between Trice and Kumo, it kind of keeps that right in your face and kind of says, okay, this is what it's doing exactly. But as you're more skilled, really what you want to become is uh, more at finding the right trade at the right moment. And that's where scanning really is effective. And to be frank, you could go and buy a course uh, and you could probably spend six to $10,000 on it today. And it would probably do a really, really good job. Uh, it may be of kind of teaching you all of these method methodologies or teaching you how to apply this method as a methodology. Uh, where you can do the same thing as pretty much a home study course that's put together in an expert advisor for Metastock. I love this thing. I think it's well put together. Well, thank you. One, yeah, one of the, the nice things that's, uh, or nice things about this package versus a lot of those courses is that they teach you how to do the trading, but you still have to manually go back and forth and look at all the signals and get familiar with them. Look at and 500 stocks look instead at five, of 13. Yeah, but, but even in, in trying to get comfortable with it, you've got to find all those signals and do the counting and figure out where they're, where they're occurring and try and tell yourself, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean as you're learning the system? And instead, this thing does the whole thing for you. Yeah, you and, know. and as, uh, once you learn, you kind of go to the minimal expert if you want to. Exactly. Uh, uh, leave the full one on if you prefer. That's the way I like it. Uh, but you've got the scanning. You've got the whole tool. It's, all, it's a tool that helps you learn how to use it. It's like buying a drill that has videos on how to use a drill yeah. right on the uh, on the thing. So And you also get to use it then once you've learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in any case. So, and um, in terms of, uh, so we this just basically lists all the stuff. There are system tests that are available if you want to do testing. Robert can give some disclaimers if he wants about how system testing and yeah. Ichimoku works. Go ahead. And I'm not a, you know, I, I put the system tests in mostly because people do like to have them available. Um, generally, though, they're not necessarily used because one of the things about Ichimoku that, that's a little bit different than other systems is it was really good at defining good entries, but it not, didn't necessarily clearly define um, a true sense of exits. Um, and so because of that, there have been some general ideas around um, what would become safe exits, and usually it's fairly dynamic. So for example, if, and this is what you would learn a little bit in the advanced class, is, is how to do that, that gauging, where the, as the price is really close and just breaking out, you might use a Senku, uh, you know, uh, the farthest Senku span away, which would usually be like Senku span B, away from the price as a stop loss. And then as it moves a little bit further, you might go to the Senku span A. And then as it moves even further away, you would then switch to the uh, Kaijin Sen. And so it becomes dynamic depending upon how far you've gotten in and to be able to change your stops to where it becomes comfortable to, to, to keep that profit in there um, and kick you out once it's, it's taken some good money out of it. Um, but you don't want it to be so tight on the same indicator that right when you get in, if the Kaijin Sen is only you know, half a point away, you, you might not want to be using that as your stop. And so right now, though, the system tests, are they're not dynamic like that. They don't trade the way that you would trade. Um, they're using the ideas, let's assume you're using a fixed stop of the B or a fixed stop of the A. It could go ahead and, and use that. Um, 
Okay. So, so, but yeah, that's basically the thing, the, that's the thing with the system. <laughs> so, like, so I don't use them, but I know people like them, and we've provided them. Yeah. And the, uh, we've provided them with different stops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The core really is to kind of get in there, learn about how it works, learn about how the stops work, go through the advanced And pass. it teaches you the system as well, so it's not a black box. Exactly. Exactly. So, and it's only 300 bucks. So normally it's 399 uh, As a special webinar promotion that we're running it's $299 we offer it with uh, a 30 day money back guarantee I like the risk reward ratio there there you go <laughs> um, uh, it is a Metastock add-on so it does require Metastock to run if you're not familiar with Metastock I'd like you to welcome you to our channel for the first time uh, I'd also tell you just a few things about Metastock I mean we showed the scanning and the testing uh, I think the main thing I would want to say about Metastock is it's literally been rated the number one product in its price category for 25 years in a row um, and that's uh, the price cat that's by the readers of stocks and commodities magazine so every year the readers go in and they vote on the their favorite software metastocks won uh, the zero to five hundred dollar price category for 25 years straight our real-time program which is the next price category up has actually won 10 years not in a row but 10 years um, and uh, it's a great program. I'd encourage you to try it. And not only are we going to give you the Ichimoku Master with a money back guarantee, you'll pay $300 for it. You'll invest $300 in it. Uh, but in addition to that, we'll give you a trial to Metastock if you need it. And that's all available on that, uh, the metastock.com slash T-S-A-I-C-H-I. Uh, you can also come in if you've got more questions, uh, if you want to kind of get some more information before you, uh, before you purchase. You can actually chat with uh, one of our sales guys. Uh, we've got people that are on chat right now. Metastock.com slash sales chat. And uh, if you want to talk to somebody over the phone, 800-882-3040. So just to recap the offer, $299 instead of $399. 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it or if it doesn't help you. And we'll throw in the what's been rated the best software in its price category for 25 years in a row as part of that evaluation trial. So I personally wouldn't trade without Metastock. I absolutely love Metastock, love the company, love the people. Always get great support feedback from our support staff about how well they're taken care of. Um, give it a go. 800-882-3040 or metastock.com slash tsaichi. T-S-A-I-C-H-I. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, uh, uh, and I think that's it. Uh, okay. Robert, thanks for coming in. It's always good to have you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Um, and uh, as always, uh, we'll see you at the next one.